Welcome to another Lumion live stream tutorial. This is Chris Walton from C. Walton Design. In this tutorial, we're going to cover an in depth look at the new 3D grass with Lumion 9. So, as Lumion 9 has been released, one of the biggest key features that came out is this new, this new 3D grass that's come. Along with many other features, this is definitely an improvement that really makes Lumia 9 stand out to other versions. And it's a little tricky to kind of understand because we've had grass since Lumia 4. I remember when grass came out and that was amazing. But now we have this new 3D grass and just in case this is confusing some people, I'm going to make sure to, to show the distinction here. So here we are jumping into Lumia and <clears throat> Just gonna ignore these panels over here. We're gonna take a look at our default Lumion grass. This is pretty much just the Lumion plane scene. And I have some examples we'll look at there in a moment. But <clears throat> if you're very new to Lumion and not, are not sure about even turning on the existing 3D grass, here's a quick tutorial on how to do that. We go into the landscape tab, landscape grass. So I think this was called 3D grass or grass before. It is now distinguished as this is landscape grass versus the new 3D grass. And you'll definitely see a difference. So I've noticed a lot of people will find people who are using Lumion who don't even know how to turn on the grass. Because by default, we see a decent texture of flat grass. It looks pretty good, but it's not 3D. Just by turning this on and off, we instantly start to get grass here. We could change its size, its height and sort of randomize it in here. You could even add some little uh, objects in here which makes it really cool. Definitely tons and tons of options to play in here. It renders out pretty well. I was pretty happy about this and this grass moves with the wind. The wind slider will make it move. It was a huge deal when it came out. But I've, I've definitely seen some limitations in it. I mean if you look at it really closely, let's make this really big you see that these are just basically gradient images. They're not, they're so small. When you render back here, you don't notice it, but realistically, it, it, it's real, it, it, it gets realism to a certain point. And that's where Lumion apparently said, let's make this better. So they introduced 3D grass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off, on off, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this little panel here. So, to find 3D grass, we go through the material editor. So, I'm going to go ahead and click on this one here. These are all the examples of the pre setup uh, 3D grasses that Lumion have developed that come ship out with all Lumion 9s. Again, this is a Lumion 9 Pro feature as well. Want to mention that out. So, usually you default here. To find 3D grass, we go to the Nature tab. And then right next to 2D grass, which they call it now, these are just textures, we have 3D grass. And if you've noticed, I've basically arrayed out all of the ones that come out with Lumion, their presets, in kind of the same order here. And you can just take a quick little look at it. You notice there's square patterns here, you know, checkerboard grass. You see those out. And there's all the different variations that Lumion has developed for us. Some pretty cool, interesting patterns to play with. And then we get into just, if you want just regular grass, clean cut grass, two variations. Sorry, I'm zooming a little faster than I want to. So that's kind of your typical grass here. And... We have road grass. This one kind of looks like um, fa rows of farm grass here. And my favorites here are these kind of wild grasses, which were shown off in the Lumion 9 trailer on that cliff house and some of the other examples. They really got a nice kind of randomized look, and they render extremely well. In fact, what we're seeing, although it looks great, this is still just a preview. When you hit the render button, even more magic happens and really brings these to life. So let's start by taking a look here. As you see that these blades of grass are individually textured. There's even kind of a, a dead tip kind of look on it. Um, 
each one is kind of a randomized image. If you look really close, they're just little, the little pieces arrayed in such a way that when it's clustered out, it just looks 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 full in 3D, even though technically they are just a, a bunch of randomized little 2D cutouts. So, as you can notice when we jump into here, we get several sliders here. And, you know, I'm actually going to go, when we dive into this, I'm actually going to go over to this sphere I have here, which will kind of help demonstrate a lot of these effects better. Uh, those were flat planes. There's some gravity I'm going to be talking about that don't show up on there really effectively. Obviously, a lot of you, a lot of you guys are going to be using topography with some some contours in it that will showcase some of this but this is kind of the extreme example of using this this sphere so right off the bat one thing I'll notice the grass only grows on the upper half so after a certain degree a certain angle it's not even going to show up that's probably not a problem for anyone but interesting note I noticed when I when I put, put this into here so here we can kind of go into all <clears throat> what all the sliders do in here. So this is the clean cut grass, except I have just increased the size of the grass just to help us see these, this effect a little better. So taking a look first, this is just like many other effects. We have colorization. This is set here to this dark green here we can lighten this we can tint this all sorts of other colors somewhere in there and the coloration slider is going to mix it this image apparently is actually pretty desaturated and just add a little bit of extra green in there to kind of find your mix of color there so that's just like the standard material every you guys should be used to that now and now we have a gravity force slider here so this one's really really interesting that they've they've definitely gone through and added many abilities to kind of mimic physics and and physics of grass and and how things are put you know uh, affected uh, naturally and kind of randomized to really get that realistic natural look that happens in nature and gravity force is the first one we'll look at where this one will actually if you noticed especially on the ends here where this angle is steep you know gravity's pulling on it and making it fall down you know I can make this even longer gravity force if not they're just unnaturally sticking up it pulls it down but if we go to the top here north pole it's not doing too much so pretty a pretty simple simple concept but this really showcases it well whereas the flat plane didn't another interesting one is bending force so I'm gonna in this case I'm gonna turn gravity pretty low what bending force does is this is what really grows off of this normal map and we're gonna talk a little more about that later but the bending force is kind of this this randomized randomization of the angles like individual like randomized angles inside of here so not all of them at once kind of like gravity works but just some sort of like twisting randomization noise pattern that's just makes it look less uniform and too perfect because nature is not does not show up like that now I've already been playing with grass size this works just like the other one um, an interesting note to to show is the the actual quantity of grass blades that will be rendered will be limited if you get too small as you can see here pretty simple here and of course I have my grass length exaggerated here so we can see some of these effects better now this map scale this works off of this imported map that's came with Lumion but if you import your own custom map this is of course how you would adjust it and affect its tiling and of course if you set it to zero if you have it UV mapped perfectly in your software it'll read that as well pretty simple straightforward and just a rotation just some extra control here we're on a sphere so mapping is kind of weird but it works just like it does in other textures now we have another little randomizer here in curliness now, the curly if you don't have it, if you have it all the way down, 
even with bending force. The bending force is kind of the lower end angles, and the curl seems to be the upper end angles. This will, some grass you'll notice just kind of falls down like this, and some has it sticking straight up. Maybe grass that's walked on more. I, I'm not a, I don't pretend to be a master of grass, but again, these three sliders, gravity, bending, and curliness, are really going to get that randomized natural look you're looking for from just the default sliders. And roughness will affect kind of the sheen and when it's reflect how it reflects. So feel free to play with that and kind of get the effects you want. As I as I look at it here, I'm seeing it looks shinier lower, and as you get higher, it is less shiny it is technically the inverse of glossiness but again it, it makes makes a little difference not not a huge difference in here so i wouldn't worry too much about it you can just eyeball it here and then the last little thing they added in here is this kind of cool feature where you can cut the grass where it's like they it's almost like they have a clip plane tied to the end of each one of these blades and you can pull them back so that's kind of gross looking but essentially somewhere in the middle there you'll get this kind of mowed grass look so tons of options i mean you think of the sheer number of of possibilities here just in the sliders to kind of get the right grass luckily lumion has given us some great ones to work with i really do enjoy them but now i'm going to go we're going to take another step deeper into how we can customize this with these maps talking about height maps yes height maps and normal maps that are not normal they're quite they're quite odd actually but very effective so take a look at this plane here this was purposely created to kind of look like it was mowed in certain rows and not that was achieved using a height map so I would refer you to my uh, importing USGS height maps into Lumion for terrain. It, different topic, but I cover height maps and how they kind of work in depth with Lum with um, and f it's playing with some black and white images in Photoshop. Uh, the summary of that is, you know, black is low, white is high, and grays are somewhere in the middle. And by creating your own normal map in Photoshop, you can create specific patterns, kind of like height maps work in other engines. So that really kind of opens the gate to tons of possibilities. Um, let's see if I can find this, the image I used here. Let's see. Fortunately, I believe it's in one of these targets we can't look at here. I'm just going to go ahead and load. I did this test image here, though. So if we load this in, the black should be short, short grass, and the white should be tallest tufts of grass. And then I have a little gradient strip here just to show you, show you how that would kind of look. I believe I have that right in. Set this to all. I believe I have it in test, test. Um, there it is. Okay. Well, interesting enough, I actually made the color map the same color as the, the height map. Another thing I forgot to mention is that these height maps will come in, but they have to come in the alpha channel of the base color or diffuse map here. This slot here. If I've lost you right there, I would recommend, <laughs> I'd refer you to my substance materials. It's it's kind of advanced material um tutorials I made. I made four parts and I'm definitely going to make some more after this. I go through this process. Um, again, this is pretty, this is more of an advanced in-depth look at this, but I want to definitely include this. So this is, this same black and white image is in the alpha channel of this color map. And I happen to put the same black and white image as the color map to really kind of showcase it. It works out really well because the white is high and the black is low. I don't know what's going on with this this kind of magenta hue to it. I'm not sure what's going on there, but there's that gradient ramp there. That was kind of weird. <laughs> That's showing the variations in height. I think I have another one in here. This happens to be a, a substance material that had a height map or just some sort of map I created to vary that the the heights in here. So there is the 
height map that loaded into here and let's see the the moss is right here so I had this material and I loaded the height map I exaggerated it so it looked like this just to kind of show that variation it can do and so if we look at this as well we'll see parts shorter parts taller so that kind of opens the door to just even more possibilities if you're really trying to get the specific grass. I, you know, 90 to 95 percent Lumion users will be just fine with what Lumion has. Maybe playing with some sliders here, but for those who really are looking for the perfect grass, you, Lumion is not really limited here. You're, you're, it's not limiting you here. It is, it is. They left the door open to do a lot of really cool things. And there's one more thing I want to show off too. Remember, this is off of the height, so I'm going to load that test again. I can just go ahead and color this green. So that's only affecting the height here. Uh, Lumion has a default kind of bending force in here, but I'm also going to talk about one other thing, and that's the weird normal maps that you can play with in here. So here's another material. A little desaturated. Let's make that a little brighter. But take a look at that normal map. Again, not very normal. That usually normal maps are purple. Um, if you there's there are variations in colors that correspond with which way things are supposed to be reflecting. But in general, you're dealing with red and blue and maybe a tiny bit of green. When I took a look at the fur. Let's see, I, one of the fur ones here, which I'm going to cover a little more in another tutorial, but you take a look at this fur here, I couldn't help but notice that normal map there and wondered what was going on there. So I can't find normal maps like that. So I just went ahead and basically created my own. Oh, I kind of wish I had that grass back. Let's just go and start with clean cut grass and make, the, uh, make it a little taller here. So this bending force can be affected by some of these normal maps. So let's take a look at these here. Have them outside here. So um, let's do this on the sphere. I think this will look really, really be showcased well on the sphere here. Again, I'm going to increase the size, make sure everything shows up. Gravity force, bending force. So the bending force is going to affect this normal map. So let's go ahead and bring you on in here. So I just did several, I just did several basically randomized colors I found online. We'll take one like this one. Do you see that? Looks like that pattern. I'm not, a, you know, <clears throat> scientifically, I could go through and find out which color corresponds to what angle. I think it has to do with that. I didn't go that depth, that deep. I just kind of splattered colors everywhere, and I'm kind of, I've, I've been baffled by the results I've been getting already just by doing that. Again, this is affected by the bending force. Let's try another one. I'm just going to go through all of them. You'll see I experimented more with two. We'll come back to that one. Two happened to be my favorite. Just a nice kind of randomization of the way the grass blades go. I mean, grass has got a pretty tricky life. It gets stepped on, it gets blown, and it, it grows in weird directions. And nature just doesn't grow it perfect. It takes a lot of work to make it look even perfect. So anyway, we can go through and manipulate that. You can see kind of tiling of the image here, but... Pretty interesting. It gives us a lot of options just to kind of play with if we're trying to get a good looking grass or maybe sometimes we don't want to use the same grass that everyone else is using. Here's a kind of an interesting one. Obviously you're seeing it tile here, these colors. There's a lot of yellow, solid blue. There's solid colors here and you're kind of seeing how they're, <laughs> that's pretty cool looking. I think you guys are getting the point. I actually started looking up just random gradients on Google Image Search to get some of these things. The only one I've actually taken the time to tile is that second one. That one kind of does this to randomize everywhere. So jumping back to that second one, this one I feel like realistically I'm gonna I see myself using. 
and in fact I'm going to share all of these with you guys I'll have a link in the description to all these colors to play with them for yourself and so what I did with this um, color normals 2 is I went and tried things something like saturating up like fully saturating each color to see what I get and as you can tell it just does a more uh, sorry bro it just does a more s stark difference here as you would expect I like that kind of more gradient one and I tried doing black and white this was just fully desaturated uh, and, and black and white colors work too My just not to the same degree so it does a little bit in there but if I went really stark in here I'm starting to see more effect as, as well but not in the same way here's a black and white kind of gradient here so you're seeing it in just a different way so again I don't fully understand it I would just say stick pretty much any colored or black and white image in there if you're just trying to get some different randomness I've been kind of surprised it's kind of interesting I did something weird like this you know I got some weirdness going on there and you can see it there's those weird curves and then that's the white stripe you know if I took even more time I mean I've learned so much playing with this or at least I've learned things that can happen. I'm not fully understanding it myself, but I wanted to share what Lumion's op left open to us because I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so you go ahead and, and drop that on one like this. This is the one I wanted. Bending force. It does kind of affect it in this way too when the light hits it. Okay, make it sure the grass is not cut. So, I don't know, something like that can look pretty good. It's my own custom creation. Of course, I could load my own color map into here, and I could put a height map in there to vary it as well. So, um, that about covers, I mean, pretty, a lot of it. Pro a lot more than you're going to, than you were probably expecting to get out of here. I've had a lot of fun with this, and I just want to showcase everything I've learned for those who really want to see every like the most out of all this effect. I'm going to cover fur again for slightly different. There'll be a quick video, but I wanted to make it this its own video. A couple other little things I want to include in here regarding grass. This grass does move in the wind just like all the other ones did. So if I go to movie mode, get a good shot on this grass. And I turn on the wind effect. It does work just like the other one does, which is pretty cool. When, you, when you're going to render the, any of these grasses, this is kind of another tip. I highly recommend turning on fine detail shadows. It looks bad in here, but when you render it, it really grabs more of that detail in there. That works with the other grass as well. And again, this grass, my only warning is it can be heavy. I've had some scenes with really complex geometry, more complex than it needs to be. It was just basically bad geometry. It was messy. And it, it slowed it down a bit. Another thing to watch out for is double-sided faces. Um, I think it could run faster if the back face is a different material, not the same, because it might be trying to grow grass twice. That might be something I, I've played with, I think, helped me out. I'm not fully understanding that yet. And you, utilizing the real grass in conjunction with the Lumion grass, because you, you basically want to focus this grass in the areas where it's, it's needed, in areas that are closer to the camera. And then for the distance, if you will have grassy hills in the background or just other areas that you want to have grass covered on here, I wouldn't recommend doing the whole thing with 3D grass. Unless your computer's running it just fine, if you're starting to notice performance issues, what I would do is I would set this 3D grass up close and then use the Lumion 
uh, terrain, what's the term is uh, landscape grass. I would use that in the distance here. Let, I'd use it in the distance, turn it on. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off really quick. Use it in the distance, and if you're worried about the colors, you can just try to get it close here. You can play with different grasses here to try to match it. Or you can even just load your custom diffuse. That the same diffuse that you're using, if you're using a custom one for the 3D grass, you could use that in there too. So that's how I would recommend utilizing. That's kind of best case scenario. Now I've already blabbed a ton of this, and you probably know a lot more than you, you're expecting to know or need to know. But that's kind of my game. That's that's what I like doing. I like finding how these things tick and how they work and sharing it with you guys. Um, thanks for watching so much. Um, feel free to leave any questions you have that were unclear clear in, the, in the comments. Subscribe for more, plenty more tutorials incoming. And thanks so much for watching. Um, this is, I um, always love making these and sharing these things with you. And all those color maps are in a link in the description for you guys to use. All right, until next time, thanks for watching.